Welcome to the Textile Heritage Museum. Located in a historic mill village which operated from 1880 to 1954, the Textile Heritage Museum seeks to tell the stories of the folks who lived and worked in this historic cotton mill village, as well as to tell the story of the wider southern textile industry. Follow me inside for a look at some of these stories. In this section of the museum, we display artifacts that people would have used to make yarn and cloth before industrialization. That is, before cotton mills like Glencoe were built. Although there was very little domestic production of textiles in North Carolina prior to the 19th century, some families would spin their own yarn and weave their own cloth as part of what was known as the cottage industry. This is a floor loom, originally built in the mid-1800s. To operate it, a weaver would press one of these pedals on the floor, which raises the frames, before passing a shuttle through the warp threads, which is what we call these. The horizontal threads are known as the weft threads. Then the weaver would push that thread to join the rest before repeating the process. More textile production would come to North Carolina in the 19th century. Glencoe Cotton Mill was one of a cluster of cotton mills built in the South around the 1880s. In 1882, Glencoe Cotton Mill started producing cotton fabrics just like these samples show. This is the original mill whistle which once alerted employees of when to start and stop work. We have it here in our display case right next to some of the early technology that kept cotton mills running and some of the shoes of employees which once would have responded to that whistle. Notice the holes in the toes of the shoes. The worker would have cut these out to make room for her bunions. This is a cotton grading chest from Glencoe Cotton Mill. It illustrates the system that cotton mills used to determine the quality of the cotton they were processing. It was a system which ranged from strict good middling all the way down to good ordinary. This is where the phrase fair to middling, meaning slightly above average, comes from. Now, the building that the Textile Heritage Museum is housed in once was the home of Glencoe Mill Village's company store. Here in the back of the building, we have recreated that company store and we have on display some original store merchandise, original store counters, along with other things that you might expect to find in a company store like this one. Mill owners often had to construct company stores since mill villages were often out of the way and their employees needed a place where they could buy things. Here at Glencoe, employees were paid out of the company store every Thursday, where they also paid in anything that they owed on the food they had bought here and their rent for their houses in the village, which were also owned by the company. With many folks working 10 and 11 hour shifts, you might think that life in a cotton mill would be all work and no play. However, most villagers still made time for some fun and games. In particular, baseball was a favorite sport of southern cotton mills. Mills would form teams and compete against each other, and especially talented players could sometimes get a job on account of their skills. Other players would even go on to go pro, like Shoeless Joe Jackson. Here we have on display three of Glencoe Mill Village's trophies, which were once proudly exhibited in the Glencoe Mill office, which is right next door. The lives of mill owners looked a little bit different than that of their employees. This is the mill office where the mill owner, usually either a Mr. Green or a Mr. Holt, did their business. The office looks much the same today as it did in the 1930s when Holt Green sat at this desk. The rest of this side of the building housed other administrative work and today displays original furniture, fabric samples, and archival materials. In the 1920s and 30s, the invention of synthetic fabrics made hosiery the next big thing in the southern textile industry. Here we have on display a circular knitting machine from J. Lynn Hosiery, which was owned and operated on the Haw River from 1971 to 1999 by Jerry Brown, who still generously comes by the museum sometimes to make socks on this still functioning machine for us to sell in our gift shop. 
Although hosiery may have been the next big thing in the textile industry, weaving never goes out of style. This is a draper loom, which was manufactured in the 1960s and once wove fabrics in Copeland Mills in Burlington. The Draper Corporation was once the largest textile machine manufacturer in the United States and produced over 1 million looms. You can see in this loom still how the shuttles and bobbins scattered across the museum might have looked when they were in action on a loom. At the same time as the loom we just saw next door was being made, the biggest textile producer in the world was located right next door in Burlington. This sign displays the logo for Burlington Industries, a company which began life as Burlington Mills in 1926. Burlington Industry utilized unique technologies, new fabrics, and an innovative business model to become a huge name in the textile industry. Although the company declared bankruptcy in 2001 and is today much smaller than it once was, many in Burlington still remember the jobs and economy that Burlington Mills once brought to Alamance County. Although it's impossible to fit every piece of history and every unique artifact at the Textile Heritage Museum into one video, thank you for coming on this virtual tour with us. Historic Glencoe Mill Village is also home to two beautiful streets of historic homes, as well as the scenic Haw River Trail. Whether it's in person or online, we hope to see you again soon.